Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. You know, getting ready for this one has been, uh, well, let's just say it's been interesting. Interesting how? More <laughs> interesting than usual. Definitely. We've. Hi everybody. Uh, I was going to look at a film project that I have been working on for a few years now. Uh, I've been working on the script, and I wanted to see essentially what AI has been thinking about it. Uh, I've already used AI a couple times on the script, um, but I haven't actually had this uh, new feature uh, that I've been trying. It basically creates kind of a podcast uh, and discussion over the entire script. Um, this script is quite extensive. It's 193 pages, so uh, it has been condensed down to about 14 minutes um, of your time, so hopefully you'll enjoy this discussion about the project got well kind of a mix of everything this time social media posts emails there's even an obituary in here plus some pretty wild maps and get this it all seems to be about idaho idaho like the state yep idaho specifically idaho as in some kind of i don't know spiritual epicenter it's connected to this film project called last prayer which we'll get into but so yeah, so the main project here is about, it's called The Last Prayer. Um, and before we get super started on this whole film, um, actually the AI introduces it a little bit differently than the way that I would introduce it. Um, but this is basically about the end times. Um, this is kind of like our last chance uh, to really understand the planet prior to artificial intelligence really changing almost everything. Uh, how we do uh, things here on the planet. So I wanted to work on this film called Last Prayer. Um, essentially, it's about reincarnation, uh, coming back to Earth, um, and how important uh, Yellowstone and the supervolcano explosion may be. So in the future, uh, one of the concepts uh, that geologists and astrophysicists agree that either it could be a major asteroid that could hit the planet or uh, like it did during the great extinction of all of the dinosaurs, or actually a big volcano, super volcano like on Yellowstone could just explode. And that actually happens to be right here in Idaho. So that's kind of the premise of the film. Yeah, it's a lot. So we're talking about Idaho, not just as a place, but like a, yeah. what, a state of mind, a mm. spiritual destination. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like the fate of humanity is hanging out somewhere in those mountains. Mm -hmm. Several of these sources mention Idaho as the last spiritual frontier. There's even talk of vortexes. Vortexes. Okay, now you've really got my attention. I'm guessing this isn't about potatoes and scenic drives then. Not unless those potatoes are arranged in some kind of mystical pattern. No, this is different. So let me show you just a little bit, a brief introduction about how these earthquakes work. So if you look at a map of earthquakes for the entire planet, uh, what you'll notice is that California is actually pretty extreme. Um, and the earthquakes actually in North America are very extreme as well as up in Alaska. But there's actually a mysterious shape of an angel that actually where its head is actually pointed in Idaho. So uh, Yellowstone, which is the super volcano location, is out here with that red little tip here. Um, and it's quite likely that this is a super volcano. Um, you can see that the pressure maybe changes over the decades or thousands of years. So it could actually move, but um, <clears throat> with such high mountains, um, you know, tens of thousands of feet for uh, thousands of miles um, of activity, you basically have to argue that there has been a lot of seismic activity in that region. Um, and it's different uh, than the Himalayas. The Himalayas is actually with two uh, plates converging and hitting each other, whereas the supervolcano is more of an outward pop uh, from the uh, surface of the Earth. But you know what's interesting? This idea of Idaho as a place of spiritual significance, it's not totally out of left field. You mean historically? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Idaho has always attracted folks who are, should we say, seeking something. Think about the Mormons heading west or all those off-grid communities tucked away in the mountains. It's true. Idaho has a certain mystique. Those vast landscapes, the rugged terrain. Yeah. It definitely lends itself to a sense of solitude, of being closer to nature, maybe even to something bigger than ourselves. Right. I mean, I've only seen pictures, but even those landscapes you sent, there's a certain energy there. You can almost feel it. 
So what happened in this film is actually around town I started to see people that looked like famous people. Um, so the way that this film kind of got started is that I saw a guy with a long beard and long hair, looked just like Jesus, and then I started to notice that so many people out in Idaho actually have the long beard and the long hair. And there was a big fat guy that kind of looked like Buddha, and then there was another skinny guy that kind of looked like Gandhi, and then I kept seeing all these different famous people. So. The, basically, the story of the film is that we have uh, all these famous people that start to come back to Idaho um, just prior to this major explosion. Um, and that's kind of one of the premises here of the film. Um, it wasn't really discussed in this podcast in super detailed, but It's easy to see how someone could feel a powerful connection to that kind of environment. It's like a blank slate, a place where you can shed your old skin and embrace something new. And this idea of a last spiritual frontier, it's like they're saying Idaho is where that transformation will begin. And that brings us back to the Last Prayer film project. From what I gather, it's not just a movie. Sorry, and another part of the film that they didn't really discuss in the podcast here, the AI, uh, is the Lewis and Clark expedition is actually very vital for uh, this whole story. So we're going to actually have Lewis and Clark, um, this guy from California uh, who reincarnates and decides that he is Lewis and wants to move back to Lewiston, Idaho. And he meets up with Clark, who's also reincarnated. And they basically discover Idaho uh, for the first time moving out from California. And one of the big jokes in Idaho is that everyone from California is trying to move to Idaho. Um, including Lewis and Clark. Uh, but you can see some of the landscape here in Idaho is very pretty. It's a whole movement. There's talk of changing Idaho's state name, or at least the slogan, to something that reflects this last prayer concept. Yeah, they're not messing around. And it really makes you think, how much power does a place have to shape our beliefs? What is it about certain locations that feel different? It's a question that's fascinated people for centuries. What makes a place sacred? Is it the physical location, the history, the energy, or is it something we bring to it, something we project onto the landscape? Speaking of projecting, one of the sources you sent talks about a road trip they took. They call it a search for true north. True north, you mean like finding your way? Kind of, but not in the traditional sense. This isn't about a compass. Or... So a really important part of this is basically figuring out what Lewis and Clark originally did. Some of these diagrams in this 193-page document include uh, some of the early diagrams that Lewis and Clark, like you'll see Lewis and Clark track notice. So this is actually the early maps that they used versus the maps that we have nowadays. Actually, the early maps are very beautiful. And in the town hall that we live in, they have some of these old older maps. Uh, they have maybe 10 or 20 large scale images that I think are original copies of what the old maps look like. And they're very beautiful and interesting to see. Um, as well as some of these Yellowstone, you can see the geyser just shooting 100 feet plus up into the air. For a map, it's more about, I don't know, a spiritual quest for something deeper, more meaningful. And where does this road trip take them? Through some pretty iconic places, actually. Yeah. Black Hills, Yellowstone, they talk about how those places hold deep spiritual significance, especially for Native Americans. And rightfully so. Those are places with incredible history, powerful connection we to also the have land moses that comes ancestors. back to earth right and they contrast and those experiences well. with mount rushmore which they call well i won't repeat the exact words but let's just say they weren't impressed they called it spiritually disgusting actually wow that's quite a contrast it shows how differently we can experience the same places mm -hmm. depending on our beliefs and our intentions exactly and it makes me wonder what's your true north what kind of journey would it take to uncover it the great question to ponder and speaking of journeys, this deep dive is about to take a bit of an unexpected turn. Ready for this? We've got Punjabi Sikh music, the island of Cyprus, and a plea for help in Alaska. So yeah, one of these days I took my friend uh, that looks like Jesus and we noticed on the lightning map uh, that we were getting a lot of lightning here in Moscow. And we looked at these lightning bolts in the town here and we traced them back uh, actually to a grain, a major grain silo area. So there's a bunch of little scenes in here that aren't really talked about that are super important um, to the film, uh, but for some reason the AI didn't really discuss that. You're not kidding. It's like we stumbled into someone's fever dream. Although... <laughs> 
I'm starting to think there might be a method to this madness after all, don't you think? I was just thinking the same thing. It's almost as if these seemingly random elements are starting to connect somehow. Like that emphasis on service and environmentalism in Sikhism. Right. And Cyprus, with its proximity to the Holy Land, it's like a bridge between East and West. And Alaska. That classic image of the final frontier kind of echoes that last spiritual frontier idea we were talking about earlier, doesn't it? It does. Okay, I'm starting to see where you're going with this. There's definitely a pattern emerging here. And it's not just about these far-flung places. Your source also talks about global issues, things like the refugee crisis, food shortages, climate change. It's like they see their personal journey as inseparable from... The so one of the things we wanted to do in this film uh, is actually recreate uh, some of the past, uh, right? And look at different people coming back like Marilyn Monroe uh, and also Thomas Edison. He created a film studio uh, that actually could rotate. So this is one of the original diagrams. Uh, we'd like to try to work on a film studio with a similar design. Um, so it's on a railroad track and you can actually move and rotate this and turn it uh, to get different sun and natural light sun angles into the uh, filming area. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Um, and there's basically some pictures in here of the actual picture of the house. It was an all black house. Um, and you can see it could rotate here um, with a guy trying to push it in the background here. And then the big open door for the rooftop was really interesting as well these larger global concerns. Which makes sense in a way. If you truly believe that humanity is at a crossroads, that we're facing these existential threats, then it's not just about finding your own personal salvation, it's about, well, saving the world. Exactly, and that brings us to the Last Prayer film itself. Wait, before we get to the film, can we rewind for a second? <laughs> I'm still stuck on those global issues. It's like you said, if someone believes humanity is at a crossroads, They feel a sense of urgency, of responsibility. Yeah, I get it. Right, so they go on this quest for true north they're drawn to this idea of idaho as this spiritual epicenter but it's not just about them it's bigger than that it's about waking people up showing them that we're all connected that what happens in idaho or cyprus or anywhere else for that matter affects us all exactly it's a global perspective even if it's so what we wanted to try to do in this film uh is that lewis and clark they come back to idaho you know their former california residents and then they get stuck in this idea where they want to find true north. Um, and somehow, they, in the end of the film, they discover it has something to do with the moon. So basically, we want to uh, encourage this whole Lewis and Clark expedition with Sacagawea. And so that's kind of how we get some Alaskan Eskimos. Because uh, originally, uh, the theory is that a lot of the uh, indigenous people came over from Asia originally through Alaska and possibly even the Aleutian Islands. Um, and so Sacagawea may have been an Alaskan person. So, uh, and actually, it turns out one of my friends uh, is a native uh, Alaskan that lives up on the Yucatan River up in Alaska. And she tells me that you actually drive. They don't even have roads to her town. You actually have to drive on the river itself to get there. And in the wintertime, it will freeze over. And it's actually better to get to the town in the wintertime because the river will be frozen. Starts with a very specific place. Okay, so now let's talk about this film because it seems like it's a big part of how your source wants to get this message across. Last Prayer, right. And you mentioned there's some pretty interesting stuff in your notes about the music they want to use. Oh yeah, we're talking Cameo, George Michael, and of course that Punjabi music we mentioned earlier. It's quite a mix. It is. What do you make of that? Cameo, George Michael, Punjabi music. It's like a global jukebox. It's like they're trying to create a... Yeah, so we really want to have a lot of musicians uh, in the town that we live in here, Moscow, Idaho, which has a very uh, funny, hilarious name. Moscow is in Russia. Um, some people say that it started a long time ago uh, with refugees from Moscow, actually, or Russia. So, um, But that's not the whole story, so who knows. Um, but anyway, let's continue on with this Soundtrack discussion. for humanity, and there's more. Your notes mentioned specific scenes they envision. Water, something about NASA, and... Wait, did I read this right? Relocating the Hollywood sign to Idaho. You did. Apparently they're going for epic. Wow. 
It's ambitious. I'll give them that. I'm getting some serious 2001 a Space Odyssey vibes here. It's interesting, though, how they're bringing in those Hollywood elements. It's like they understand the power of spectacle, of creating something that's both visually stunning and thought-provoking. It makes me wonder, how do they see this film actually making a difference? It's one thing to make a movie, it's another two. Well, to inspire a <laughs> movement. It's a good question. So some of these images are actually from Santa Cruz. We want to get uh, Lewis and Clark uh, imagery down in Santa Cruz, California, and kind of this is at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Um, we've kind of pre-screened some of the areas, and it's actually got a whole campus there that is kind of an old school camp, California style campus that was really interesting. And it speaks to the power of storytelling. For millennia, humans have been using stories to make sense of the world, to connect with each other, to inspire change. Maybe your source sees this film as their contribution to that tradition. Their own epic myth for the modern age. Exactly. Okay, so we've got global issues, spiritual quests, a dash of Hollywood magic, and a whole lot of Idaho. Where do we go from here? Back to the source. Let's unpack some of these details, starting with Idaho itself. Okay, so we're back in Idaho, but it's more than just a location, right? It's like this whole dot vibe, this energy that your source is tapping into. And we've got some specific details to unpack here. First up, that map of Earth you keep mentioning. Right, and it's not like a typical map, is it? This one feels more dot symbol. Totally, like a map of the soul or something. And then there's that photo you send, the one with, well, it looks like a body floating in a lake. It's a striking image, that's for sure. Yeah. And it's labeled Body of Christ. Yeah, that's the part that really gets me. What do you make of that? The body in the lake, the label, it's all very... Cryptic. A I... little ominous, even. Exactly. Like, what are we supposed to take away from that? Is it a warning? A prophecy? It definitely feels symbolic, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, it's pointing to something deeper, something beyond the literal. Okay, so if it's not literal, then what is it? What's the message here? Well, let's break it down. We've got the map of Earth, which we've already established is probably not about geography. It's more like a detached spiritual landscape. Right, like a map of consciousness, maybe? Yep, exactly. And then you've got this body of Christ submerged in water. Water, of course, being a powerful symbol of... Transformation, rebirth, cleansing. <laughs> all of that, yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we're looking at here is a kind of... Spiritual death and resurrection. Now these are diagrams uh, basically of what this futuristic town in Idaho would look, potentially look like prior to uh, the uh, last prayer, right? So we wanted to kind of diagram out uh, potentially what this futuristic town would look like uh, for the film. Uh, this actually came from a very famous book. I don't have the title of the book here, but hopefully someone can add it at some point. Um, I think I may have it in here somewhere, but we'll see. Um, there's also a town here called Upside Down Town. Um, you can see um, it's just near Lake Coeur d'Alene. Um, it's a very important town that we'll probably do most of the filming in. Um, you can see Coeur d'Alene has a very beautiful lake all the way down here. This is the town uh, kind of on the south side. It's a little bit more rural, a little bit more quiet. Um, Coeur d'Alene does get a lot of celebrities from Los Angeles that move into their um, retired uh, police officers and other kinds of people uh, from California definitely move up into this area. Um, but we wanted to film more on the south side. It's got some more interesting rivers and lakes, and that would be kind of the main area. There's some maps and some links to that area here. I met a really cool older guy that owns a thrift store here, and I talked with him. Um, there's a, only a couple buildings on this whole street. I can see if I can load this up really quick. So you can see uh, what this street looks like. Um, but you can see there's a little bit of a boat launch here. Um, and it's just kind of a really quiet little street. It's called Lake Coeur d'Alene. There's a little cafe here. Um, <coughs> but uh, there's also some very old kind of uh, <coughs> rustic buildings all around here. Um, and then some ships that have been abandoned, you can see. Um, and some other things. Um, but <coughs> in this building here is the thrift store. There's a lot of props and some other things that we could use uh, potentially for the film. Direction. Ooh, okay, I'm following you. So it's not just about Idaho, it's about this larger shift in consciousness that's happening, maybe even a new era for humanity. Right, and this image with the body in the lake, it's like a visual representation of that transition. Okay, that makes sense. But it's still pretty intense imagery. Yeah. What do you think, listener? How do you interpret this body of Christ in the lake? What does it evoke for you? 
It's interesting, though, because when I think about Idaho, it's not all doom and gloom. There's mm-hmm. that beauty, that sense of peace. Right. We talked about that earlier, the vast landscapes, yeah. the connection to nature. It can be very grounding, very inspiring. Exactly. So how does that fit in with this whole death and resurrection thing? It seems like a bit of a contradiction. Maybe it's not a contradiction, but rather two sides of the same coin. Life and death, creation and destruction, Mm -hmm. they're all part of the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. And maybe your source sees Idaho as a place where those forces are particularly potent. Like a microcosm of the universe where everything is happening all at once. Exactly. And maybe that's why they're so drawn to it. Because it reflects their own internal landscape, their own spiritual journey. Okay, that's deep. So we've got this map of Earth, this body of Christ in the lake, and this whole sense that something big is happening both on a personal and a global level. It's a lot to process. It is, and we're not done yet. Remember that seemingly random collection of things we talked about earlier. The Punjabi Sikh music, the island of Cyprus, the plea for help in Alaska. Oh, right. I was wondering when those would circle back around. Well, I think they connect to this idea of a shifting spiritual landscape. They represent different facets of that transformation. Okay, I'm listening. Break it down for me. So Sikhism, with its emphasis on service, compassion, and environmentalism, it speaks to a way of being in the world that's about more than just individual enlightenment. It's about recognizing our interconnectedness and taking responsibility for each other and the planet. Right. It's about action, not just contemplation. Exactly. And then you've got Cyprus, geographically situated between Europe and the Middle East. It's a place where cultures have been colliding and merging for centuries. A crossroads. Exactly. And maybe that's what your source is trying to create with this film project. A crossroads where different ideas, beliefs, and perspectives can come together. And Alaska. Where does that fit in? Think about the image of Alaska. It's often seen as a place where people go to escape, to reinvent themselves, to connect with something wild and untamed. The last frontier. Exactly. And in a way, isn't that what your source is describing? A spiritual frontier, a place where the old ways of being are falling away and something new is emerging. Okay, I'm starting to see... Yeah, so that's really one of the great reasons why this film really works in Idaho as well as in Alaska is because of this concept of a spiritual frontier. Um, So... You basically have the last frontier um, for the planet, right? We pretty much have mapped out everything for the planet. We can even do street view for just about everywhere, every street on the planet. Um, So that really uh, changes everything. Um, So now we basically have a spiritual frontier. And where is that? So one of the theories is that um, in this film is that Christianity um, and particularly uh, Christians... And uh, Mormons and a lot of Utah is very heavily Mormon um, and even out west um, there is kind of like a uh, time in history which the, this wasn't really discussed uh, called the Salem Witch Trials um, and that was soon after uh, the discovery of the United States um, and they basically uh, had a uh, witch trials um, and they basically killed all, all these um people that didn't necessarily believe exactly what the Christians believed. Um, and there was actually an escape, E, uh, which was Sacagawea, um, and then she led the Lewis and Clark expedition. So some of this is fiction, and some of this might be possible truth. Um, but um, around the same time uh, of those trials, um, just after this, actually, Lewis and Clark left Um, And then they found basically Idaho. So um, this made for kind of the early history of the church in Idaho uh, and kind of a different history for uh, Mormonism. So if you know anything about the Mormons, um, they believe uh, that Native Americans are a very vital part of the history of the church. So you might want to just study up that a little bit before uh, getting involved in the project. How all of these pieces fit together. It's like they're creating this global tapestry, weaving together these seemingly disparate threads into a larger narrative about, well, about what? About spiritual awakening, about the fate of humanity, about the power of art to inspire change. Maybe it's all of the above. Maybe it's up to each of us to decide what resonates most deeply. You know, through all of this, I keep coming back to that word prayer. It's right there in the title of the film, but it's more than that. It's everywhere in your notes. It is a loaded word. Hope longing, reaching for something beyond ourselves. But with last in front of it, 
it hits different. Like it's the 11th hour. Exactly. Yeah. Urgency, maybe even a little desperation. And that brings us back to Idaho. Why this place? Why now? Okay, yeah, remind me. What were those notes about Idaho and significant spiritual events? Right, like those events are somehow woven into the land itself, connected to prophecies, especially about the end times. But then there's that other side, yeah. right? The beauty, the peace, that feeling that you're surrounded by something so much bigger than yourself. It's both, isn't it? Destruction and renewal, all wrapped up in one place. Maybe your source sees Idaho as a mirror to the world, a place where the fate of everything is being decided. And last prayer takes on a whole new meaning in that context. It's not just asking for help, it's a call to action. Like, hey, we have skin in this game too. It's about engaging with the present, with the very real challenges we're facing, which brings us back to those global issues your source keeps circling. Right, the refugee crisis, climate change, all of it. It's not just theoretical for them, is it? It's personal. Yeah. And it demands a response. The, this film, this whole... So yeah, that's a big part of what made Idaho um, Idaho is that basically it was far out and it still is to this day. It's one of the most uh, rural states in the entire country. Uh, it has more trees uh, than anywhere else in the entire country except for Alaska. Um, at least in the lower 48 states, Idaho has almost all those trees. Um, so it's basically um, very important for housing uh, and just the rural communities here uh, as well as Wyoming and the neighboring states uh, are also very rural. The last prayer idea. It's about shaking people awake. An alarm clock in the form of a movie. It's ambitious, that's for sure. It is. But your source seems to believe in the power of this project. They're all in. And you know, they're not the first to try and tackle these big questions through art. People have been doing it for centuries. Musicians, painters, storytellers, we're all trying to make sense of this crazy thing called life. And using our chosen medium to connect with others to maybe even spark a little change. It's powerful stuff. And in this case, your source is using everything they've got. Music, imagery, even a bit of Hollywood drama. It's about going beyond words, straight to the heart of the matter. So on one hand, you've got these deeply personal reflections, but then there's this drive to reach everyone, to start a movement. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? Maybe that's the point, to show that it's not an either-or situation, the personal and the global, the spiritual and the political. It's all connected. So where does that leave us? We've covered a lot of ground here. Cryptic Max, Quest for True North a floating body of Christ. It's a lot to wrap your head around. What does it all mean? Honestly, I think that's up to each of us to decide. You've been given a lot to think about. Pieces of a puzzle. Now it's time to see what picture you create. And who knows, maybe somewhere along the way you'll find your own last prayer. Thanks for taking this deep dive. Okay, yeah, so I want to say thanks for everybody listening to this concept. Um, so again, there is very significant evidence you can see on this earthquake zone right here. We definitely have heavy earthquakes here in Idaho as well as out to California and even up to Alaska. So that debate of where <clears throat> this last prayer may be could very likely be in Idaho. It could also be somewhere else on the planet. But um, there is just so much evidence um, to support um, these claims uh, as well as research uh, by, uh, you know, uh, geologists. So um, it would be really important to try to work on the details both scientifically, ethically, and spiritually about this in the whole entire project. Um, it's going to be hopefully a fun project, um, maybe sometimes sad, maybe sometimes humorous. Um, and we want to try to get a lot of musicians involved and different people. Um, and I tried to show some pictures of some famous people in this document already. Um, and hopefully you'll be uh, very interested in trying to contribute. Thank you so much. See you later. Again, please let me know if you're interested in helping. My phone number is 773-321-8181, or you can just email me at ashrmartin at gmail.com. Thank you a lot. And I also wanted to thank uh, my friend Tim, uh, who is has his obituary in this very document. I didn't want to show it in very big detail, but um, basically uh, he lived in Los Angeles, and this is basically part of what he wanted to accomplish. Um, I met him and I was never really interested in film and I still am not super interested in film, but I wanted to try to help out because I immediately realized the importance of both the scientific importance of researching out where this last point on the planet was 
um, as well as looking into the question of witchcraft and all kinds of religions and the religious history of the United States outside of just pure Christianity. So I wanted to kind of paint a true picture as well as a very heartfelt picture. And I really wanted to thank Tim so much. I'll try to go over this really briefly. Um, but uh, basically, Tim, this is a little bit about him here. Um, and basically, he worked with celebrities down in Malibu, California, as well as uh, returned back to Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Um, but anyway, so I hope you really enjoyed um, reading about this, and I hope you enjoy uh, helping out. Thank you so much.